Thank you so much, Kai, for uh, sharing your morning with us. And I will pass the mic to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Steffi. And good morning, Buna Diminata, Yoregel Kivanok, Guten Morgen to everyone who's with us from wherever we're joining from. Uh, I hope this finds everyone having a good start to the day, mid-afternoon, or thank you so much for those from the States coming in, joining us at night as well. Do we all have a nice cup of tea or coffee? I was told by Steffi this was a requirement or a good glass of wine, depending upon the time of day. All right. Um, so the first thing that I would like to express is just, a deep sense of gratitude. Uh, one, to say thank you to everyone for coming together. When we had our all too short breakout now, um, I was just about to reflect in the group that I think this is probably the first pandemic in human history where even though we're all separated in so many ways and with the physical distancing and quarantining in our own homes and cities and countries around the world, over the last weeks I have been having video calls, phone calls, WhatsApp and Skype calls with people all over the world, from here in Cluj to many different countries. First pandemic we've had where we're all able in so many ways to stay connected. And probably the first one where there have been yoga videos for kids and dance lessons for kids online that can at least, uh, for those of us with children, take some of the time that they have to help in full-time working and full-time parenting as well. Um, I also just want to do a really quick shout out to you, Steph, because this is just one of the so many initiatives that you have created for all of us inclusion more widely. And I think sometimes the people who are most active and doing the most for those around them don't always realize or hear how much it means and how much it's appreciated. So in this moment when it's something new for all of us in the world in different ways, or at least for very many, um, thank you for helping to create this space to bring us all together. And I'm actually gonna continue a moment with this theme of gratitude because we're getting bombarded every single day and there's so many new experiences in what is happening now but what I have found extraordinary to witness and, and to be a part of in many ways is the unbelievable resilience, innovation, and creativity, which we're seeing. Right now, we have incredible doctors, nurses, health workers on the front line in so many countries, and in far too many of them lacking even the most basic proper equipment and protective gear that they need for themselves. I think I saw just the other day in Romania, when we reached about 700 people infected in the country, 100 of them were nurses and doctors and health workers. And yet, from the, the sister of one of my good friends in New York to people I know right here in Cluj, these people are going out every single day and night, often working double or triple shifts, and they're doing it to help save our lives and to keep us safe. And from a few days ago, when many of us came out at eight o'clock in the evening here in Cluj to happening yesterday in Belfast and many other cities, all of us around the world trying to show our appreciation when people went out and sang or clapped or cheered for health workers and emergency response teams in their countries, to the incredible ingenuity and creativity we're seeing from people who have 3D printers to companies, tech specialists, and everyone coming together, pitching in. Um, I read this fantastic article from a doctor in New York uh, just last week. And uh, contrary to what you sometimes see online where some people, usually from fairly comfortable safety of their homes or, or their offices are questioning, do we really need to have this degree of response? Do we really need to go in quarantine? Here was a doctor who was right on the front lines, just coming from a shift and saying, yes, we do. Because right now, and this is New York, one of the wealthiest cities in the world with some of the most extreme poverty in the world as well. But in New York, they have a fairly developed healthcare system compared to many parts of the world many, many countries where there's virtually no medical infrastructure and where you have 
uh, less than perhaps 1% of the doctors and nurses you need per population, virtually no hospitals equipped with the necessary, what they need to help people in this situation. But here in New York, um, they still need a lot more than what they have now. She'd just come back from her shift. She was asking, like so many doctors, police, health workers all over the world, please stay inside, do your part. This is how you can help. But the other thing she said was, but staying inside doesn't mean don't do anything. It doesn't mean become inactive. It doesn't mean become lazy. We need your support. We need your response. We need your creativity. And this for me is one of the themes that keeps coming up these days. We are seeing in so many ways from those people who took the, the um, face masks that are produced for swimming and have now looked at how to adapt those and to make them protective gear for doctors that are covering their entire faces to the, the artists, the legal experts, the NGOs, the volunteers who are finding ways of getting shipments of plastic to the city and using that to become protective masks and everything. We're seeing at this moment when we are challenged on so many levels, that answer to the question that many of us have when you're wondering, what's human nature? What are, what are people like? Are people good? Are people bad? Or when we get these sometimes very negative ideas of, of people and of the world around us because of some of what we see. I hope our eyes are open to what we're seeing now. I hope our eyes are open and able to see the way everyday people all over the world are responding with solidarity, with support, with pitching in, with doing the best we can. In addition to the gratitude that I really feel and I, I wanted to reflect and to share for the health workers on the front line, for emergency services, for people who are out there taking care, I think it's also really important to think of those that sometimes we don't. When we go to the supermarkets these days, we can be a little bit stressed. Not enough toilet paper, not enough flour. It's actually impressive in most areas how they've been able to be restocking it. But at least here in Cluj, the majority of the people that are cleaning the supermarkets, that are stocking the shelves, that are working at the cash checkouts, they haven't until recently had even the most basic protective gear. There are people who have to go home to their families. There are people who work long shifts with some of the worst salaries in our society. And there are people who are also interacting with many others. And that can be one of the nodes for having it spread further. And for me, being able to get food to feed my family, something that we often take for granted in so many ways, those people who are stacking those shelves, who are continuing to do this work, they're the ones making it possible for all of us. They are as important for saving our lives as the nurses and doctors on the front line. I think we need to not only appreciate, but in the same way that we are getting involved and calling and making sure that doctors and health workers have protective gear, we need to make sure that people in stores have protective gear, that everyone who is in critical roles or who is being most exposed to this. Um, it's been wonderful on the one hand, to see this fantastic sharing of resources, to see philharmonics, operas, ballets, all going into making their material available for free or finding creative ways of holding their performances so that we can keep culture and keep together as a community. It has been uh, amazing to see the sharing among so many people of free online courses or activities that we can do for our children. Um, I also couldn't help laugh when a few days ago I saw someone post the difference between experiencing the coronavirus as a young or adult of any age without children and experiencing it with children. So on the without children column, some of you may have seen this, it was, I'm going to read all the books that I bought and never read. I'm going to do my yoga. I'm going to learn a new language. I'm going to spend time with my loved one and all these beautiful things. And honestly, for everyone who can take that time, because that is fantastic and beautiful. And too often, we don't have the time for that in our lives that we make so incredibly busy. And then on the other side, it had for parents with kids during coronavirus, 
Try to pee with the door closed. That was your one aspiration for the day for what you hope to be able to accomplish. Now that was adorable, that made me laugh, but it also brings up something else. We're seeing a lot for those who are socially connected and a lot of those who take part in activities like the creative mornings. Um, we're often in a space in our lives or in the type of jobs that might allow us to work from home, at least for many, um, get us connected with these types of communities and sharing. And then there are the hundreds of millions of people around the world who live on the streets, who there's the well over a billion people in the world who have extremely meager income, not low income to non-existent, um, people who make their money by shining shoes on streets that no one's walking. And just to be aware of the profound economic impact that this is going to have on people. So that brings me to one of, one of the other reflections that I've been having because I've also been seeing sharing from people from many different backgrounds about how this is going to bring about a change. Now humanity is going to, to wake up and realize um, all the problems with how we've been doing things so far and all the what we could do better or what we could do differently going forward. And the one thing that I wanna share with you on this Friday morning with our our coffees and on our sofas or desks or chairs, wherever we are, is that's not going to happen. That's not going to happen if we just expect it to happen. It didn't happen after the financial crisis significantly. It hasn't happened after many of the major crises that we faced in the world. It's not going to happen unless we make it happen. And then it can. And that's probably one of the most powerful things that at least for someone in my line of work, working in peace building and dealing with conflicts and crisis from issues here in Cluj and Romania to around the world, it's for me one of the most important things for us to bring forward from this. Imagine if for the last 30 years in Romania, we had done governance and used our national budget based upon thinking what would actually be good for the country? What would improve quality of life of citizens? What would create greater opportunities? What would uh, enable well being and security? Imagine if for the last 30 years we've been investing in our healthcare. Romania, for most of the last 30 years, has not built a single new hospital anywhere in the country. We've refurbished many, and many are incomparably better than they were before, but it's nowhere near what our population needs. We haven't built the hospitals we need. We haven't invested in making sure the education is there, the salaries are there, the equipment is there. Imagine if for the last 30 years we had been investing in education. Many of you have heard me say this so many times, it must be getting boring and I apologize for it, but I fell in love with Romania long ago. I am falling in love with it now every day during the coronavirus, seeing the way communities and people are responding. But as some have heard me say, the first time I thought of leaving was when my children were born. And uh, several weeks back, I had to be going to many different schools in Cluj to try and find where will my children go to school next year because they're getting out of Karadi and they're gonna to go to school. And it was a nightmare. It was really heartbreaking and terrible to see the conditions and the quality in many schools. And I have huge respect for the teachers and what they're trying to do but it is nowhere near where it needs to be. Now, if in the last 30 years, instead of doubling our military budget from 2 billion to 4 billion euros and setting the world record for the fastest increase in military spending, if instead of taking part in wars in Afghanistan and Iraq, we were actually supporting the brilliant innovation and creativity, job creation, economic infrastructure, investing in well-being, building the hospitals, building the schools. Imagine where we would be when trying to deal with the situation today. One of the definitions we have for disasters in our field and in emergency response is it's the event and your ability to handle it. So an event in itself like coronavirus or tsunami or an earthquake 
isn't a disaster. It only becomes a disaster if we're not able to handle it. Same is true in our own lives. When we face different issues, different challenges, when you have the resources, the capacity, the support network to handle it, we do. But when it overwhelms us, when our capacity to handle it isn't there, that's when it can become a crisis at many different levels. Right now, what is happening is because of what we have or haven't done in the last 30 years to a large extent, or at least the extent to which it's affecting us. Now the question is, what do you want for the next 30 years? One of the things I love so much in Romania and one of the things that inspires me that's happening around much of the world these years, we have never had as much innovation as we have now. We've never had as much creativity. We've never had as much human capability. And yet, and this was part of the quote that I wanted to share, a lot of our systems, a lot of our how we organize in our countries, in our society, how we do governance, how we do economics, a lot of that was created before any of us were born. And it isn't the best that it can be. It isn't what we can do as a species. I'm not going to speak more on this line, and I know I've already spoken too much, and we should open up for the conversation soon, but I just want to touch upon a few other things briefly. Uh, one, just, just in closing for what I was saying, um, if you have not yet had the chance to see uh, Valerie Cower's speech from years ago from the States, this brilliant young woman who was speaking about the situation and the challenges they were facing then in the United States, and she said, what if the darkness of this moment is not the darkness of the tomb, but the darkness of the womb. So not the darkness of our fear and everything that's negative, but of the amazing world that we can give birth to. The other thing I just wanted to take a few moments on is how this is affecting so many of us at the individual levels. For some, it's a wonderful moment to breathe, a wonderful moment to be with friends. For some, it creates questions and fears. We're not used to not going out. When, when I meet with people and ask them what do they love most about Romania, one of the things they say is the incredible social uh, atmosphere, the connecting, the warmth, the hospitality. And now for many people, we're in our homes. We're not having those interactions. And that has effects at so many different levels. So, if any of us watching this morning, if you have experienced that at times you're feeling lonely, depressed, um, if you don't know what to do, if you're wondering about yourself, your life, then I know it breaks quarantine rules, but please come over, look after my kids for a few hours. They will fill you with energy and give me a chance to read a book. No, just joking. Um, it is okay to feel that. And that is normal. You're not alone. A lot of people are experiencing that. And I love also the way here and in many countries, we have people that work in mental health, coaches, psychologists, counselors, who are volunteering their time for free. There are health numbers that you can call also here in Cluj on Baljutam Cluj, that fantastic platform. We'll put it up in the chat group after, um, which has brought together thousands and thousands of volunteers and people in Cluj who want to be part of the solution and see what we can do. Um, there are also students and others who are helping psychology students in that. Uh, I wish we lived in a world where we understood that to speak to someone about how we feel, to get um, support when it may seem too much for us, uh, would be as normal as uh, just going to the pharmacy and getting whatever we need for a common cold. Um, it should be. Other thing in this moment, um, which I really want to mention because I want to do a shout out and ask for your solutions and for your thinking about this and what we can do. There are tens and tens of thousands of women and children in our community, in our country, who are in situations of extreme violence, danger, and abuse right now. So they're in toxic homes and toxic relationships where there's violence, even under normal situations. And now, when they have no way of getting out, when people are trapped in the same physical space, and when that stress and tension and everything is we are seeing clear indications that it's growing. So we've come together here in Cluj and in so much of the world, and we've been looking at solutions for how do we do the 3D printing? How do we do the protective gear? How do we raise the funds for hospitals? How do we do all of this? And that's, that's excellent. We need to think about those other lives that are vulnerable now and need our support. 
the people you hear sometimes next door in our apartment blocks when you hear i had a message from a friend this morning hearing screaming and fighting from next door so i don't know the answer i have a few ideas but i want us to bring the same ingenuity the same resourcefulness the same thinking to that and then the last thing i'm going to say and thank you for being so generous with your time and letting me speak way too much over our morning coffee last thing i want to say is do not underestimate our power do not underestimate your power and ability to shape what happens in the future in our community and in our world. Many who are on today have lived through September 11th, 2001. Many were born after. But basically, we're in a context where our world has been at war for 20 years in various ways. We're in a context where we're generating more wealth, more creation, more innovation than ever before, and yet it's concentrated amongst a smaller group than ever before, at least to that extent, and where we can do better with it. I hope we rise. I hope we, we walk together through this moment and we rise after to create something better. And I love that, that quote that I've shared sometimes where someone is asked if they're an optimist or a pessimist, and they say, I'm neither an optimist nor a pessimist, but I have hope born of the choices I make and the action that I take. I don't know how this went down with your morning tea and morning coffee, but I know that just seeing all these faces and connecting and seeing so many good friends, it is wonderful to be here together with you. Mutsumeshi kusunum for that. Maybe now we could just open up and have a good conversation together. Thank you so, so much, Kai. <laughs> we have the mute claps. <laughs> you know, in Kenya, they go like this. When you're together in a community and you want to support something without it, this is a cheer. Okay, um, to, I don't know, to facilitate to make it easier, who has a question, you can use the reactions button. Um, okay, do we have the first one from Maria? You <laughs> and also if people want, you can type in uh, messages yeah. on the side and or say you want to on the side say you want to ask something okay i will start one uh being uh, challenged with two very energetic uh, six-year-olds or seven-year-olds uh, um what are your tips and tricks <laughs> for for the other parents who are facing this with kids at home and cannot close the door at the toilet <laughs> um it's it's really hard to give tips and tricks because all of us are so different uh, like for me i when i need an extra bit of time in the day where there's a moment of space or quiet i get up at 4 a.m and I have friends who would just look at me like I'm crazy uh, for doing that. Other people try to stay up later at night, um, just to have a bit of space. One, don't forget you. It sounds so easy to say, and a lot of parents or anyone swamp just, you know, almost cringes when they hear it. But you, you need to take the space for the things that hold you together and give you joy, whether that is... Uh, just stepping outside for better fresh air for a moment, doing music, reading a book, doing exercise. For all of us, physical movement and exercise is incredibly important uh, in this period as well. If you're not getting enough, that does have effects on your mental state of being as well, for many. Um, there have, and maybe we can share some of them on the chat here, there have been incredible lists put together um, with course lessons. Some schools are great and are supporting parents and sending out materials for them. Uh, unfortunately, not all have that capacity or they're not used to it. So there have been lists put together. A lot of the best online educational companies in the world are making their materials freely available. Um, if you don't know Math Tango, it is phenomenal. I don't know if they've made it free. It's ridiculously expensive a little bit normally, but when I saw my sister's kids and how they reacted, mine are addicted. They're now doing multiplication, division at a level that lots of adults I know have challenges with. There's Homer for teaching writing. Uh, that one, I don't know if it's multilingual. 
Uh, then if you are going to have to put them in front of a screen, please try and do it as little as possible, but at least find, if they speak English, something like Sesame Street or its equivalent, which is at least healthy and gives healthy education rather than just other things. Um, and the other bit is take time to play. Uh, we're not used to it often for many, and we really get trapped in trying to meet all of our work deadlines. I had a call yesterday with people from all over the world, uh, people working in peace building across the globe. And it was so interesting because the first people were speaking, who were speaking were talking about all the extra time they have and, and how wonderful it is and they don't know what to do with it. And then came the rest of us where our work is busier than it has ever been just on the work side, plus full time looking after the kids. Um, and it can be easy to just get up right away, go to your work because it's at your home table or your desk or, and just try to get through everything you have. I really encourage just try to create a schedule for yourself where you're building in real attention and play time for yourself, for your children, with your family. And if it's tough, um, put your kid in front of the computer, give me a call, I will do entertainment with them or have my kids talk to them and give you some free time and try and help out that way as well. There's Thank some you. questions on the side. Yes. The Rachel, Rachel from Humboldt, uh, can you tell us about the books you have behind you? <laughs> Rachel, thanks for sharing that and I'm going to be straight out and honest. I went into the Gandhi Peace Library, took the books I wanted people to see behind me and got them there on purpose. So I am not at home. Yes, I am fully respecting the quarantine. Our offices are three meters across the driveway from my house. I'm very lucky in that and with the entire rest of the office and team uh, in our homes across the city and elsewhere. That allows me to sometimes come here when I need a quiet moment without two children jumping uh, into the middle of our morning coffee together because they really would have if I had done this at home. <laughs> I thought about it. But uh, um, so the books behind me are from the Gandhi Peace Library. It used to be a public open library that was available for everyone. Um, and we had at least a thousand visitors every single month using it. And it has the largest collection of books on gender studies in all of Southeastern Europe. It has amazing books on environment and ecology, human rights, peace building, psychology, many, many, many other fields. Um, the Peace Institute is in a smaller location at the moment. We've got a huge team working in just three offices. Uh, and because of that, our library spread throughout the building. We want to move to a bigger location, make it available again. Uh, that's backstory. The actual books, very specific reason. Naomi Klein's Shock Doctor came out a few years ago, but it looks at major economic crises or disasters like in New Orleans and others, and how that is often used by governments to then drive through extremist um, destructive economic policies which are incredibly beneficial for a few companies and often make things much worse for the community. So for example, you've seen the destruction of public quality education and uh, handing that over for private companies who do it as an incredible money generating business. Um, you've seen the cutbacks on social services, on infrastructure, driving people out of their communities to make way for so-called gentrification or more expensive apartments. This is a must read for anyone who's a thinking human being who actually is interested in what's happening in the world today. I would suggest another sisterhood is forever. Sing, whisper, shout, pray, feminist visions for a just world. Um, I've been giving some presentations all throughout the last year where I just have pictures of presidents and heads of states around the world. Um, anyone in the states, and for many of us, our first thoughts go Trump. Would that that were the only utterly not great leader we have in the world today. That's my being diplomatic. Uh, Putin. Erdogan, Orban, Xi, uh, Duterte. It is incredible the list of really misogynistic, arrogant, aggressive, and not very well qualified men of a certain age that we have governing over half of the world's population today. Can't leave out Modi, also Modi has to be in there too. Um, and we need a shift 
And you're seeing that. You're seeing, it's interesting that actually some of the most extraordinary, visionary, and capable, responsible, empathetic leaders we have in the world that actually deal with real issues and challenges and try to find solutions and to be models. For some reason, they're all coming from tiny countries right now, Iceland, Finland, New Zealand, and they're all young women. Um, but in the same way that I said that right now there's a lot of violence happening in homes, uh, I've spent nearly 25 years working in peace building around the world and more women are killed by their family members and by people close to them, people in their homes every single year than in all the wars in the world put together. So that is something we need to change. And that is changing. It is changing on a global scale. We're seeing whiplash, backlash, um, provoked by that, but it is amazing to see it. Then you can't be at the Gandhi Peace Institute uh, or Peace Library without having Gandhi. So that's Bapu there. Uh, an amazing book on waging peace by David Hartzell, an incredible inspiration for many of us. Um, lots more books, sorry. Best idea is when we are through with the coronavirus, the day after our gigantic global barbecue, I forgot to mention that, um, I'm inviting everyone to a huge celebration that we should have in all of our communities immediately after the coronavirus ends and we all get back out. Let's take another day off. If we can take a day off for disaster and crisis and, and disease, let's take a day off just to celebrate each other, to celebrate the store clerks, the law enforcement agencies, the health workers, and everyone. And cook whatever you want. Bring your music. Bring your families. Let's have a gigantic celebration. And I'm inviting everyone to Cluj. I have already had confirmations from people all over the world who have said they're coming. Um, but I think we can also do this all over. Uh, but after the party, and possibly the hangover the next day, when you're ready, come by the library, because we're going to have some great books uh, that, that we'd love to share. And you can find a lot of them online, and a lot of them for free now as well. And I'll also put up a post to a movie which is actually made about our field called In Pursuit of Peace. And uh, the company behind it has now made it freely available as part of what's happening during Corona. I love that uh, it's named after a nice beer. That's great. Um, but uh, they've made the movie available and we'll post that in case people would like to see it. The library is at Yongika Trezec. Do not come here now because we're respecting the quarantine. But for afterwards, Yongika Trezec in Gukirescu vis-a-vis Stadion. That's in answer to the question of where's the library. <laughs> there's some great publications online as well, really amazing ones in this and every field. And maybe we can all share if you've got, if people here together now this morning have great resources, uh, if you know lists, if you know websites, maybe we can put them in the chat and then collect them together for after for everyone. Yes, we can, we can try that in the chat or on even on the event page because I yeah. don't know how, uh, how long the chat is available after this uh, whole discussion. Uh, but I love that we already have a bunch of resources and uh, I think we will all, I will stalk you after the, <laughs> virtually stalk you after this, uh, this meeting uh, and ask you for the list of the books and the uh, film and the barbecue. And I will send the message to all of the attendees and on the event page also with all of them. Um, we also had another question from Kevin. Um, do you have clear examples of things you want to see put in place and can there be actions put in place to solve things step by step? You mentioned education transformation, how? Schools and hospital construction and so much more. I like, in addition to big ideas and thinking at the broad level, I like very practical. So I have about a few thousand examples and I can share some here as well. Um, one, one of the first things, too much of what we do to try and address challenges and problems is often done in silos and fragmented initiatives. So each of us in our different spaces see challenges with education. Some people get involved, almost always thinking we're the first ones ever doing it, creating a different program, a different NGO, a different effort, and we try to solve it. And we need to get beyond that because it's not the best of what we're able to do now. Um, in any issue that we are working or want to get involved, one of the first things I would suggest is let's look at what has been done before, what is being done by others, 
then create forums or spaces. So for example, around education here in Cluj, uh, we'd like to create a forum that will bring together all civic organizations, teachers, student bodies, ministry, companies, and others that will really look and do a serious diagnosis, just like they do in medicine. What's working in our education system? What isn't? What's been improved? What are the challenges? What are the immediate priorities? What are our longer term goals? And then really look at learning from what have been different examples and efforts to address it. And instead of continuing to implement them in siloed ways, um, actually looking at how we make that more systemic and get it out across the education system. So I'm saying this, it may seem too vague or abstract, but I'm saying this after 25 years of practically working in many different contexts, collaboration is essential and bringing together unusual actors, opening to people from different sectors instead of each going at it on our own. Um, would love to see peace education implemented across the board in school systems. It's very interesting when you look at the World Economic Forum and they identify what are the competencies that are most needed in what they call the fourth industrial revolution or a future economy. They list those every year. And there are things like collaboration, resilience, teamwork, problem solving. And these are things that are not taught very well in many of our school systems. They are actually all things that can be learned. Some people might have some innate qualities which make them uh, better at doing that, but everyone can actually learn creativity, can actually learn constructive problem solving. And in the same way that we all, in many countries around the world at least, have basic hygiene and health education in schools, in the same way that we have um, uh, math, not meaning that everyone's gonna go be Albert Einstein or a physicist, but we learn math because it helps us in daily life. It'd be wonderful to have peace education in schools. Um, going beyond that, we really need to start reimagining and rethinking our political and economic systems. This isn't anything revolutionarily new in the sense that as long as we've existed as communities, we've had people trying to see how we make this better. But we do need, I believe, a game to reach out to create broad discussion and engagement with people across our communities. Um, we've had moments in our histories uh, in the 60s and 70s and other periods where because of political dynamics on a global scale, there was vibrant political discussion. It didn't matter what your background was. It didn't matter what your profession. People got involved and thought about what's happening in our communities, in our countries. There's been a trend on some levels in the last 30 years, post 89, this idea that one system is the truth, is victorious, is the only answer, is better than everything else. And it's utter nonsense. Um, it has been a deeply destructive system on so many levels. Um, it is not efficient in, in creating opportunity, well-being, use of technology, and so much more. Uh, and I think we need to get beyond simplistic isms of this or that that we've looked at in the past, learn from them, but also really simply come together and ask ourselves, what do we want? What do we want in our communities? What do we want in our country? What are priorities important to us? It's been impressive to see in some communities more than others when they've implemented participatory budgeting and managed and had also social culture where people really got involved in that in the community. You saw reductions in corruption, reductions in wasteful expenditures on military equipment and others and increased use of resources for job creation, innovation, health, education. And in communities where that's been done well, their ranking on the Human Development Index, which looks at quality of life for many different categories, has been some of the fastest increases. Um, I could go on and on, but one of the things that deeply inspires and excites me is we have that amazing ingenuity and creativity I was speaking about. I think we need to use that same innovation we're doing now to find ways of connecting online, to look at how do we continue this connecting after and make that for a purpose. One of our definitions of Patrier as an institute, when we were asked once years ago by someone to describe in one sentence, we said, passion plus professionalism dedicated to a purpose. Patrier being the Romanian Peace Institute. We need to bring our passion. We need to bring all of our different professionalisms and we need to look at how do we deal with basic issues like improving um, economic opportunity, job creation, well-being, equality of opportunity, um, better education, better health, basic things like that. Uh, we will do that. The world the way it is today is not how it was 30 years ago, 70 years ago, 100 years ago. 
Uh, I love when my kids ask me, Daddy, can you show me the pictures you took on your phone when you were a child? <laughs> now, there are people in this room who don't even know what phones looked like when I was a kid. You know, you've seen them maybe in cartoons, uh, ring, ring, you turn it around and it's got the single handle and there's one line in a house if you're lucky. Where we will be 10 years from now, 30 years from now, is not the world that we are in now. I'm sorry, I've gone on way too long on this question, but the one thing that I would say also, which I think is important for us, for people that are working at the front lines of dealing with conflicts and crisis and peace building worldwide, uh, one of the things that we've been identifying for several years now is we're going in the wrong direction. We have more capability and expertise for mediation, early warning, peace building and peace processes than we've ever had before in human history. We also have more expenditure on military um, aggression and adventurism build up and stockpiling of weapons, aggressive misogynistic leaders on many levels. Um, if people actually knew, I find it funny sometimes to see on broad communications, people's perspectives of many of these issues. If people actually knew what is behind the scene and often the lack of competence that goes into addressing some of the most important issues that there are, the wars and the conflicts that there are, um, it would horrify. And one of the things I would love is to get people from all of your sectors, from people in IT, from people in business, from people in psychology, teaching, every other field, and get your genius and your intelligence to come together to help us look together at how we can deal with conflicts more effectively. Because if we don't solve these issues more effectively, it's not only about war, but it's about how we live with difference, how we live with diversity, how we deal with the issues in our society. If we don't become better at dealing with that, if our capacity to handle the issues doesn't get better, then crisis like what we're seeing now with coronavirus, there can be more, there will be more in different ways. And if you don't build your capacity to do better, what often comes out of it is worse. Thank you, Kai. Do we have another question from the rest of you? Please don't hesitate to speak up as well. Exactly. It is wonderful to read them, but it's even nicer to hear from each other too. Um, hi, good morning, Kai. This is Juana and everybody. Good morning and very early morning and whatever time it is. Um, actually, I, I was going to ask a question, but I really like the last thing on, the, on Skype that I think we could really talk about on Skype, sorry, <laughs> Zoom. <laughs> um, okay, but uh, I'm, I'm assuming everybody can see it from Alexandra. Like what are simple small steps that we can take right now? And I think that's something to reflect on. Yes, and what would be awesome is to actually create like a solutions forum where we bring them together because there are so many of these. And this coronavirus is a great example of that. Someone had the brilliant idea of thinking of taking that Decathlon face mask and just adding some basic things to it. Small step. And now one person did that in one community and you've got thousands upon thousands of tech teams and 3D printers in countries around the world making that happen. One of the areas where we really need shift at a small level, I think all of us know this, is climate crisis, the climate disaster that we are currently having. And we need to make those shifts. But again, a small handful of companies are responsible for the overwhelming majority of, or industrial sectors of pollution that goes out. So no matter how many small choices you make, it isn't enough on its own. And this is what's important. Sometimes we automatically get this idea of, we can't change the world, so how can I start small? What can I do in my daily life? It isn't a question of one or the other. The changes we make in our daily lives help often to make us more aware. They have practical impacts. If we get stores to stop carrying so much plastic and start packaging better, it has a practical impact. Get restaurants to stop using plastic straws, start using recyclable ones, or just don't use a straw, it has a practical impact. Those micro measures are great. And there's actually, I'm trying to remember the name. Maybe someone knows. There was an amazing book written just a few years ago that just went through all these things, written in, in those catchy, exciting ways that they often are. All the micro changes we can do on different things. Um, and I really think that they do help and they do help plus. Plus are coming together and no longer allowing eight men to have more wealth than four billion human beings because that is an obscenity killing far more people than coronavirus. Um, if we aren't recognizing it, if we aren't changing it, we're allowing systems which lead more people to die every year than the entire Second World War in its entire history. 
okay? Over 42 million people die a year from lack of access to medicines that already exist, but are patented and they can't afford them. And lack of access to clean water, which we could provide to every human being in the world for less than the cost of one US stealth bomber, one single piece of military wastage. So for me, it really is an either or. I celebrate the positive changes we can make in our lives. Um, less meat, take training in nonviolent communication because so much of the violence we experience is also in our daily communication with ourselves and with each other. Um, and rather than my babbling on, it would be awesome if we had like this technology where we could just open up and all, I, I'm in the gallery view of Zoom. I don't know how others are seeing this right now. Sometimes you see just the person speaking, please don't do that. Um, instead, you can go to gallery, you can see so many faces of all of us. Be amazing if we had this where just each person right now shared your one favorite idea for change and action you can take that you feel is important at any level. And it could be something that we could do at a micro level. It could be something you want to see done at your community or something at a global level. People thought of the United Nations. And the United Nations has a lot of challenges. I've worked with it far more closely than many will have had experience. I've seen those challenges up close and it is awing and beautiful at its best. And the service which many people give in working for a lot of the agencies on the ground is extraordinary. Um, people thought of actually every innovation we've ever had. So let's think of those types of innovations that can make better. But also one thing I would invite is if we can try to do it in a way that we sometimes consider both those who we often forget. So a lot of our tech orientation, a lot of our innovation is for this 40% of the world's population that is highly financially able and connected and linked to these companies and all of that. And we're looking at that. We spend more money on lipstick than we do on all the, just in the United States, than all the investment in finding medical solutions to diseases that exist in sub-Saharan Africa. We've got the doctors, we just need to invest. We just need to direct our effort to that capability um, and much more. Sorry for speaking so much. No, was, please don't apologize for this. It's, it's actually really, really fascinating and we, we get lost in the beautiful <laughs> ideas that you share. Um, we had at one global um, chat with uh, the organizers of Creative Mornings, a really nice suggestion that maybe we should try now uh, as an engagement for all. Uh, you mentioned if any, everybody can, uh, can share that one idea or that one micro change with the rest of us. So what I propose is everybody type down but don't press send, just type down that one idea or one micro change. And when I say now, you all press enter. What do you say? <laughs> okay, so start writing, don't press send, just start writing and wait for my signal. Okay, so at three, two, one, send. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> okay, thank you so much for taking part in this small challenge. If we have another, we have time for one more question. You can speak directly, it's easier. So, um, question. So <laughs> next week, Friday, nine o'clock, oh, sorry, nine o'clock Romania time again. For next week, uh, yeah, yeah, nine, nine a.m. Cool. We'll do the this same. This is a really great idea. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Um, Thank I'm, you. I'm so happy. I'm so happy that you 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 enjoy it and love it. Um, then, if we don't have, I, I, I also I also have a comment. Like yeah. I see everyone actually like the majority said, be kind, mindful, and uh, pray for love. Like it's amazing how we all on the same kind of vibe. Um, uh, yeah, on the same vibe, <laughs> the vibration is kind of similar. So it's amazing to see that. No, no, like it's 
everyone spontaneously wrote it without actually speaking to each other, you know. Can I, can I share just a reflection on that without wanting to be too disruptive to thanks, Alexander, because that really is a beautiful thing to recognize. I want to highlight just a thought from another side of it. I heard a wonderful uh, quote once that I've always loved. Um, Prayer is what we turn to when we don't know how to solve something. Um, The deeper idea behind that was that prayer and inner reflection, inner mindfulness, um, they are important. They can help you find peace. They can help you um, make sense of what you're dealing with. They can help you find the inner resilience. When you take your child to the emergency room of a hospital, which I have done, it was moments from dying, you don't want the doctor just to pray. When you want to feed your family or yourself any, any meal time, any time you're eating, you would never imagine that the farmer or the giant agro industries that we have today just pray. If we did, my child would have died and we would starve. Meditation, mindfulness, and prayer are important parts of our life, just like breathing, eating, just having balance, finding purpose, connecting, and also the community that we often do that together. It can be very important for people as well. But we need action. Our education is a system. There's a system of education. There's good parts of it. There are challenging parts of it. When we say be kind, imagine if in our schools, our children were learning kindness. If I showed you the books I read my children, sometimes I cry just from having read them. They are so beautiful. My kids, the, the last days, there's this dot series, the love dot, the happiness dot, the mindfulness dot, the collaboration dot, the respecting difference dots. I, I think it's called dots or spots. It's this book series. Um, And in one of them, there's about kindness snippets, these little snippets. And when you do something really kind, you put a kindness snippet, little cut out of a piece of paper into a jar. So my kids created little kindness snippet jars and you should have seen their yesterday morning. Oh yes, Carl, I think that's so beautiful. Oh, Aaron, I have this artwork I'd love to give you. The, the idea that kindness was something to be valued and celebrated, they loved it. They did it totally themselves. We can learn it. The other thing is, please do not put everything on children. Like the extent to which we think, oh, let's teach our children this and the world will be better. We were all children. We've had tens of thousands of generations of children. We are the adults now. We are the ones with the responsibility and the power to act. So teach our children that surround them with love and safety, celebrate who they are, celebrate who your neighbor is, surround them with love and safety, with ourselves, with each other. And yeah, Kevin, I agree 100%. Structures, action, finding, I love this concept in Hawaii that every human being has a gift. Okay, find your way, find what resonates with you. It might be your poetry, it might be your analysis, it might be your ability to plan action, it might be your 3D printer, it might be your love of tech solutions, it might be your ability to listen and offer kindness and hearing for people. It might be a million different things. Find your way that you can be involved. Meditate and pray if that's what has purpose for you for strength. Bring people together in spaces where we hear each other, where we create community, just like Steffi has done by creating this, like all of us have done by coming together here and act because that's the way we create the world we live in thank you so much kai before um, yes the recording will be available to answer another question um before uh, having to to uh, end this meeting um i want to say thank you once more kai for for taking your time um in especially precious, precious time of, uh, to, to be with us. Um, and also, um, 
I want to thank again our, our community local partner, Cluj Hub, that has facilitated and supported us logistically to have this global meeting. Uh, and of course, uh, Creative Mornings will not be possible without the support of the global partners, MailChimp, um, Basecamp and WordPress. Um, I have uh, one more, uh, one, two small challenges before uh, wishing you a beautiful Friday. Uh, first of all, if you would like to hold your favorite cup of mug, uh, and I would love to have like a group picture with all of you, like a screenshot. <laughs> Excellent. I need to hand, so I will put my mug down. <laughs> so the first, uh, the first part, say morning. <laughs> okay. And I will try the second channel also. Okay, this part, yes. Yay. Good, and before, uh, again, before ending, I promised you another uh, session of uh, break breakout room um, in which um, I would encourage you to, it will be longer than the first one. Uh, and I will encourage you to share, um, I don't know what you got from this meeting or what you are grateful for in this moment. Welcome back, everybody. <laughs> Do we still have Kai? <laughs> yeah, I see him, he's on mute. Sorry. <laughs> but you know, I also have something to share. Like um, my grandmother, I'm in Russia. So she always says, imagine we all have so many different opinions and we are all so intelligent and smart. So if you listen to each and everyone, like you're not going to progress. And I see it even now here, like Kevin is sharing, someone is sharing. And pretty much everyone has an idea, but in order to move, like it's it's hard if you listen to everyone, you're not gonna progress, kind of, because everyone thinks no, it's better like this, no, it's better to communicate with nurses or like this, you know. Actually, Alexandra, that's such a fantastic point. Thank you so much for for bringing that up. Um, just to to share some things, uh, there is an entire field of what's called design thinking and design approaches. And one of the things that we do in design approaches is you look at how to enable collaborative processes and collaborative design where you can be working with thousands, even tens of thousands of people. And if you create the right structures and processes and the right facilitation, you can get all these people who under one structure or way of communicating together might get blocked, might argue, might yell, and instead you create flow and synergies and you're wow. getting people to bring forward the best of their ideas. And it's, it's taken off in the last 20, 30 years, the design field, many people have been getting exposed to it, sometimes just on the really micro level, like how you apply it to a product or something, but there are many passionate about looking at collaborative processes, both small and large scale. And, and I'll share one example um, from the United States, which like so many of our communities and countries, uh, many, many parts of it now are really polarized. And there, there's so much polarization at so many levels. When someone has a different idea or an opinion than you, you don't stop and say, huh, well, I really want to hear what you're thinking. Tell me what's behind that. Try to understand. Instead, we very often label, shut down, or start using very aggressive and combative language. Um, yeah. There is a gentleman who's been working on democratic processes and democratic theory for nearly 50 years. And when he saw the increasing breakdown of the ability to discuss across difference, he began a very practical project. And what they've been doing is going into some of the most deeply divided communities in the United States, uh, bringing people together, people who are extreme just filled with loathing and rage and hatred and their skin crawls when they see Trump and people who think he's the greatest savior in the world and the answer to all problems and just an absolute genius, um, which are somewhat different points of view. And also people across many things, gun control, how to have our medical system, stuff like that. They put them in a room. They do prep with them one-on-one. -on -one. They talk with them. They bring them together. And they have 
rules that everyone's agreed on for how they're going to facilitate the discussion. And at the end of those weekends, they're usually two, three day events, they find people align to about 70 to 80% agreement on virtually all issues. Mm -hmm. A lot of it is how we learn as individuals to communicate, modeling of our leaders and structures and systems put in place. Anyone who works in a company, which is where we spend most of our life outside of bed, knows that you can have interactions with colleagues that are empowering, inspiring, give you the best. You can have interactions which are frustrating, blocking, make you feel depressed about the work you're doing. So companies, at least some of them, have really looked at how do we do good collaboration? How do we do good teamwork? How do we do good human resource management and, and create support like that? It's the same when we're looking at how we have these conversations and from our companies and offices to our families and our homes to our society and our world. We need to evolve our capacity to have those discussions more constructively and to work for practical solutions. And it's not just that whole string of pretty words I threw together now. I can share with people who are interested very good books and our systems, processes and methods which can be learned. That's so interesting. Thank you for that answer. Like, Yeah, I am really trying to remember right now the person doing that project. I want to say Larry Diamond. It's one of the most famous thinkers in democratic theory for literally the last 50 years. And this is what I call father's brain. Before 2014, there was not a date or a name or a source that I forgot under any circumstance. Since then, I have Swiss cheese. Uh, and there's these holes, but there have been two or three articles published on it in the New York Times. Um, I will try and find it afterwards, or maybe someone else can find it or may have even been familiar. Something like Democracy Project or Democracy Experiment, they've been talking about it as in the New York Times. Um, you can find it there. Again, I want to say Larry Diamond, and I'm almost completely certain I'm wrong. Uh, but it is an interesting initiative. We're doing it also here in Cluj on a different level. Uh, and in Poland, Hungary, and, um, and Germany right now, we have a project called Champions, uh, which is bringing together people from all different sectors and often different communities where there's a lot of polarization and creating collaborative spaces and roundtables and fora to look at how we create solutions together. Um, and I've also done this in the midst of the most challenging war context in the world. I, I headed the largest engagement in Nineveh in Iraq uh, where ISIS Daesh was at the height of the ISIS occupation, uh, working with people from different communities who'd been affected by the war, including many women who had been abducted by ISIS and raped, some by more than 30 men every day for months. And we worked with these communities first on a massive level on healing. And we also worked bringing people together from across all the different communities in the same room. One occasion, one of the young people was vibrating with anger at being in the same room with someone else. Now those two are still working together six years later or five years later in peace building together um, with the right processes and the right methods. You can't solve everything, just 99%. And that itself is huge. I can sit here all day. <laughs> you yes. have to switch to something stronger at one point. <laughs> For those from abroad, we have Horinka and Soika, and you are more than welcome during the bar. Oh, you I, yourself, now, Juana, tell us the truth. What's in that glass? Okay. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I guess orange juice. I don't know. Thank you once more, Kai. I'm really, really grateful for accepting uh, to join us. Um, indeed, this this uh, this, uh, this is a discussion that can go for hours and hours. But even though most of us are stuck off at home, we're still working, and <laughs> uh, we still. I am sure that you also have a lot of calls and stuff like that. But um, you left your email address in the chat, so if anybody else has questions or wants to continue a certain topic, um, I'm sure that they can do that, right? <laughs> Yeah, I think it's just very brief to share, just so you know, there are already so many platforms and wonderful initiatives 
Um, there's a fantastic initiative that Stefan shared recently, uh, Stefan from the Cluj Cultural Center, mm -hmm. uh, where they're uniting artists across the country to see how the cultural sector can contribute. There are psychologists, there are doctors, there are great volunteer organizations. Vajutam Cluj is a platform you can find easily on Facebook, but it's also been set up in communities all across the country. Um, there are things that we can all do in this moment and in every moment. Um, I just want to say thank you once again to everyone. I want to say, Steffi, you know that whenever you have an idea or anything, I will always be their first one stepping up to support and be there with you. Thank you so much for doing this. And since we've got Bapu Gandhi uh, right behind, just that line that goes so well for almost every moment in life, be the change you want to see in the world. Mutsumeshi kusunum, Josie from Wasa. Have a beautiful day. Awesome. The same. Thank you so much. Thank you. Stay safe, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you so much.